Okay, well, welcome to Supervision. My name is Robert Farrell, Licensed Professional Counselor here in the state of Texas. And I am, as you can tell, doing videos for my LPC associates. Uh, those of you that are one of my associates, you have been following me for some time, and I've had you watch different videos. So in any case, this one here is on self-care. And one of the things I think uh, we've already talked about at least once uh, is how to care for yourself and how important that is. I decided to put together a video for that this week, and this one's going to be fairly short because uh, there's not a whole lot of it to cover. All right, so some definitions of self-care. Uh, there's two qualities to it. You can look this up online as I did, uh, look in a dictionary. It, it, this is not a hard find. Uh, first one, the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. Uh, notice taking action. Number two, the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness during periods of stress. So we've got two qualities to this here, taking care of your own health and then qualities of periods of stress. Uh, and as I like to teach folks, periods of stress can be dealt with in a crisis mode or prophylactically by taking care of things before you need it, such as meditation and breathing exercises, mindfulness training. Those things are very helpful in a prophylactic sense prior to the stress hitting. But there's two qualities to this one, and that's what really makes it so important, recognizing that uh, action is required and that it's about your health. Some self-care and internal locus of control aspects. Uh, you'll notice three uh, different studies there that I found. Uh, here again, easy to find information on the internet. Uh, you want to go to good quality websites, uh, not the ones that are kind of questionable. Uh, the first two are really with regards to diabetes. It's amazing how much information is out there on diabetes, self-care, and internal locus of control. You put those two things together, just self-care and locus of control, and it, it, it was a flooring amount of information that came out. It, it's huge. Uh, so let me define locus of control first before we go a whole lot further. I will be doing a, a video on it at some point uh, in the near future. In any case, locus of control, there's two aspects. First is internal, the other one is external. In this case, an internal locus of control is for those who have the ability to say, I am in control of my life. No one but me makes the decision. It's not luck. It's not external social forces like Facebook or social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. None of that stuff is going to influence in me. I make my own choices. I may look for information and then incorporate that into my choice, but it's my choice very important aspect of internal locus of control. Now I want to point out in the third study, this is a really a, kind of an interesting quality to it. Notice that date, put a little spotter there on it, 1984, okay? This is not new information, guys. This goes back uh, about 34, 36 years uh, on that one alone, okay? Now, anyone in academic realm say anything older than 10 to 15 years, don't use it. But in this case, I'm using this to point out, this is not new information. This is stuff that has been going on for a long time. Also notice, who is this to? The Journal of Community Health Nursing. Pretty much only nurses are gonna read that. And what they're trying to point out is, take care of yourself, okay? This is a huge issue that's not new. Uh, it's new to counselors and mental health providers, mostly because we're kind of the new ones added to the healthcare industry scene, where our industry as LPCs has only been around for about 50, 60 years now. Compared to doctors, nurses, and social workers, we are exceedingly young, okay? So pay attention to that last study. That's actually a really good article. Uh, that information is amazingly accurate even today. Okay, there's a sentence, he physician heal thyself. This is an old 
really old axum uh, that does not mean what it sounds like, okay? You would assume it means, you know, if you're taking care of yourself, you're supposed to. You're educated. You're supposed to take care of yourself. And it is kind of what it's saying. But let's look at some of the history of it. It came originally from the Greek uh, mythology time period, uh, history in man's time period. Uh, I don't have the Greek for you, but I, you can get that real easy. Just Google it. Um, it also has a background in the Roman Empire period of time in Latin language. And they both kind of held to the same idea. We'll get to that in just a moment. So it was so prevalent that even Aesop's fables picked it up with the frog and the fox. Uh, this is an old story, one that I had totally forgotten from when I was a kid. Um, I do remember hearing it once, but the story goes that the fox being a uh, crafty thing wanted to go out and make some money and he presented himself as being a miracle worker, magical doctor who could cure all kinds of illnesses and problems. And he's hopping through the forest telling all the animals that. And a fox who was very sly came up and said, well, if that's the case, Mr. Frog, why are you so green? Are you not taking care of yourself? You have a limp. You move kind of odd. Are you not taking care of yourself? See guys, what a lot of this one here is about is it's a moral aspect. There is a moral to this story, this fable, this statement from the Greek and Roman empires. And really what it's referring to is a challenge to end the hypocrisy that we have, which is if we're telling people to do something for their own health and well-being, are we doing it ourselves? Are we taking care of ourselves? Um, Another way of saying it would be, how can you ask others to do what you are not willing to do yourself or what you're unwilling to do? Um, this is a big aspect, guys. If you're asking people to stop drinking or smoking or uh, stop using pornography or to stop uh, abusing themselves or other individuals, you have to say, are you doing that as well? Something to think about, something you're going to have to really kind of put your mind to. If that is the case, then physician heal thyself. Okay, this is the next part of this. We've only got one more slide after this one, so we're really just about done. I'm not going to use the animations here. I thought about it, but I got a lot of pictures. The whole thing about self-care is really about role modeling find what you enjoy to do that works for you to take care of you. If that's weightlifting, boxing, spending time with friends, pottery work, prayer, going to church, meditation, uh, planting, doing uh, any kind of gardening, spending time with family, friends, um, in the top uh, right there is a guy with a grinder doing what looks like some metal work. Um, all I can say is you have to identify what works for you. At one point in my history, I had uh, a great opportunity where I was able to go to the gym and work out every day of the week. It was wonderful. I really needed it at that point in time. Uh, there's been other times when what, I, what really worked best for me was on weekends, having time alone to get in my garage and do my hobbies and things I enjoy to do. Um, during the summer months, yard work. Absolutely amazing what that can do. Yeah, could I pay someone to do it? Sure. But pushing a lawnmower actually felt really good uh, most of the time, okay? So when it comes to self-care, the best encouragement I can give is add to what you already know, what you can do. Not just the meditation stuff that you teach people, not just the grounding stuff that you teach people, but all the other things that you in your life have figured out how to do it and what makes you happier, functioning better, healthier.
All right, so we have concluded this one. Uh, like I said, this one's going to be a short one. Uh, right now, I'm just a little over 10 minutes in length on the whole slide uh, video presentation. Uh, I want to say welcome to supervision again. This has been talking about self care and use it wisely. Go out, take care of yourself. When you spend time with your clients, invest that time into them. They need it, but invest time in yourself as well. Okay. We have to balance things out. You have to be able to take care of yourself in order to help take care of them. We have to become very much advocates for our own safe well-being happiness mental stability uh, which means also if you need to see a doctor see one if you need counseling get counseling we need to go out and take care of ourselves okay as i was always taught there is nothing wrong with a counselor getting their own counseling do it you will run across items that will be very disturbing and you'll need to unload that information not only that, you'll find information that comes across from other people that will hit you and go, oh, that happened to me. Those kinds of events, very shocking when that happens, when you have memories come back of your own and realize you got stuff of your own to deal with. In any case, guys, uh, that's it for this week. Welcome to Supervision. Glad to have you on board with me. Uh, if you're not one of my LPC associates, uh, then I hope this video does some help for you. Uh, it's been a short one. I have others. Uh, definitely want to check them out. I'll be trying to do more as time goes by. Uh, I'm getting ready this next week to go to a conference uh, up in the North Dallas area here in Texas. Uh, for those that will be there, maybe I'll see you. Uh, if you've seen one of my uh, episodes and, and you see me at a conference, come by and say, hey, I saw it. Um, if you didn't like it, that's okay. Just don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, but if there is somebody you disagree with, that's fine. I'd be more than happy to, to entertain that and we can talk about it. Uh, but in any case, uh, until I see you guys in face-to-face -face, uh, sessions each week, you take care. Take care for yourself so you can take care of others.